There are no days in which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these ten days. So it's important. Nothing is as important as these ten days. The people asked, the companions asked, not even jihad for the sake of Allah. He said, not even jihad for the sake of Allah, except in the case of a man who went to fight, giving himself up and his wealth for the cause, and came back with nothing. So, before you think about the first part of the hadith, look at the second part of the hadith. The companions know that jihad fi sabilillah is amongst the highest of the deeds. So they're surprised. Rasulullah is saying, look, these ten days are so good. So they're saying, Ya Rasulullah, not even jihad? He's saying, no, not even jihad unless the person is shaheed in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not even jihad carries the rank of these first ten days. Look at the mercy and the ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us by giving us these ten days. And the scholars of Islam say, there must be a distinction between your ibadah in these ten days and the rest of the years. If there is no distinction between these ten days and the rest of the 355 days, it means you have abandoned this sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's very important. You've abandoned this very important sunnah. The sunnah of the last ten nights, we all see the mosque is full. But the sunnah of the first ten days of Zul Hijjah, make sure you don't abandon it. In Quran we're told, Wal Fajr, Wal Yalin Ash, by dawn and the first ten nights in Surah Al Fajr, Allah is swearing by these two things. The scholars of Islam, including Ibn Abbas, the great Mufassirin or explainer of Quran, say, by these first ten nights, Allah is referring to the first ten days of Zul Hijjah. So Allah is swearing in Quran by the importance of these first 10 days. So I hope by now the penny has dropped and we have got the understanding of the first 10 days. It's unequivocal in terms of its understanding. Okay. Moving on, the next logical question is to ask, okay, so what should we be doing in these 10 days? I want to follow the sunnah. I understand the importance of it. What specifically should I be doing in these first 10 days? That's the next logical question. And we all know, I hope, the best and the greatest of deeds in the first 10 days of this month is to go to the blessed place, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to engage in the hajj. This is the greatest of deeds. And some of our brothers who are sitting here today, they will be going on this journey. At least two. That one came to me yesterday, one I know is sitting here. These two, amongst many of those brothers and sisters, inshallah, are going on the journey of love. The journey, as Ibn al-Qayyim says, this is the journey of love, the journey of hajj. So you can see Ramadan and the place, and you can see the first ten days. It's so important. Allah has legislated the hajj, the journey of a lifetime, in these ten days. So if we are able to do, if we haven't made arrangements, obviously we can't this year, but in future years, we need to make the niyyah, inshallah, that Allah blesses us with the journey of love. Okay. But for the rest of us, the masses that are sitting here, what specifically should we be doing again in the first 10 days? <laughs> Three things. It's authentically reported from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he encouraged us to do tasbih in this first 10 days specifically. Saying, Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar and La ilaha illallah. It's authentic hadith. Rasulullah told us to do this much. And the companions would do this and they would add subhanallah. So these four words, which are very light on the tongue and heavy on the scales. No one can say, I don't have time. This is our common mantra. I don't have time, I don't have time. No one can say, I don't have time to this. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. No one can say that quietly and loudly to encourage the people as the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. So let's specifically remember this point and engage in this action, inshallah. The next specific thing is the fasting on Yawm al-Arafah. This is the day of Hajj, the day when Islam was perfected and completed. On this day, remember to make dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
as the millions, just imagine the millions of our brothers and sisters, some who are sitting here, they will be there in Ihram, on the plains of Arafah, raising their hands, beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever their needs are. And we remind those that are sitting here today, that will be there tomorrow. Don't forget your brothers and sisters in this Juma gathering asking you to make dua for us. So this is for them, but for us as well. There are certain times when du'as are more encouraged. Yawmul Arafah is a day. We should all be encouraged to make more du'a. And remind yourself of the etiquettes of du'a. Glorifying Allah. Sending truth upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Seeking forgiveness of your sins. Mentioning the names of Allah. Mentioning the good deeds that you have done. Being in a state of wudu. Facing towards the Qibla. You're aiming with a sword. You want something. Make your du'a correctly and properly in accordance with the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, alongside this du'a, make sure we fast on Yawm al-Arafah. Fasting on Yawm al-Arafah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fasting on Arafah is expiation of forgiveness of two years of sins. The previous one and the year to come. It's huge reward for one day of fasting. One well, next Saturday, one day, it's a huge reward. And it's even easier for us, because the times will be even shorter, even than they are in now. So every one of us should make the niyyah that, inshallah, I will, and I will encourage my family and my children, all those that I know, to fast Yom Al-Arafah being next Saturday. For inshallah, forgiveness of two years of sins. It's also narrated, in a hadith in Abu Da'ud, that Rasulullah sallallahu sallam used to fast all of the nine days of Dhul Hijjah. Okay. The first nine days, Rasulullah sallallahu sallam used to fast. So the more fasting that we can do, the better it is. This one we will all do, inshallah. But the more than that that we can do, it's better for us to do, inshallah. Okay. This is the second specific thing. So we're talking specifics. Thus be fasting. The third specific thing that we are commanded to do is the qurbani or the sacrifice of an animal and the hadith tells us every hair of the animal that is slaughtered is reward for you just imagine every hair of that animal is reward for you you are reviving the sunnah of your father Ibrahim salam. You are reviving the sunnah of your Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are feeding the poor and the needy. Look at the rewards of this act. So many, multiple rewards, multiple rewards of taking part in the act of Qurbani. So when you have the opportunity, take part in the act of Qurbani. So these are the specific things that we need to be doing in the first 10 days. Other than that, the hadith says, generally it's a good time. So generally, as much Qur'an that we can do, as much du'a, as much dhikr, as much istighfar, and don't forget, as much helping other people, engaging in da'wah. Last week we heard about the concept of Islamic justice and Muslim prisoners and how we should help them and support them. Really, they are the forgotten ones amongst our community. They are forgotten, you know. And we are quick to criticize other people about how they are and how these nations are, etc., etc. But when it comes to ourselves, we are slow to chastise ourselves. And I'll give you one example in the news that I saw that impressed me so much. It impressed me about Israel. And you will be thinking, what on earth can impress someone? No, what impressive. They had one prisoner taken. One prisoner for that one prisoner, they were prepared to exchange a thousand of their prisoners. You can say, these thousands were unjustly imprisoned, and oh, that's fine, I'm not disputing. But, nevertheless, the principle stays. For one prisoner, they were prepared to exchange a thousand. That's the value they placed on that individual. What value do we place on Muslim prisoners? So not to distract, not to detract and take away from the body of the khutbah. But the deeds should be specific and the deeds can be general. And amongst the general deeds, engaging in da'wah, helping Muslim prisoners and those that are suffering is an important part that perhaps our rewards will be multiplied in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. 
أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفر إنه هو الغفور الرحيم